You just tuned in to the Tiger Toledo Show. It's very important that you leverage technology to the best of your abilities. So right now, I'm live on Instagram, right? But at the same time, I'm on GarageBand and I'm recording it for my podcast because I want to be able to leverage this content, right? Um, then I can take this content and I can upstream it to Apple Podcasts and Spotify and throw it on YouTube and send it on an email. It's very important that we learn um, leverage, leveraging and scalability. Very important. Yeah, 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 yeah. We are, we are about to go in. So. You know, I'm a ha- I like I like this dark light because it's it's kind of funky looking. You know what I mean? But I'm going to have to turn on the light. The reason why I have to do that is this. I want to share. Hey, Monique, what up? Out there in Florida, shout out to you. All right, so today we are covering Louis Vuitton. Louis Vuitton world domination, world domination, okay? We're going to cover them because here's the thing. Here's what I've learned in marketing, right? And I learned this with my Google, Facebook, Instagram ads. The ads that I started rolling out, um, for those that were in our fast pass coaching, you guys know about this. That formula was was designed for high ticket items. These were those ads were designed for people that had ten thousand, twenty thousand, fifty thousand dollar products that they were trying to sell. Right. So with that being said, the guy said, you know what? I don't have a high level ticket item like that, but I do have my romance books that I want to sell. So he cre- he took the same formula and rolled it into his books and his, now his books brings him about $18,000 per month with that formula. So I said, you know what? I wonder how many other formulas that are targeted for affluent people because we're just continuing our conversation from yesterday how many conversation how many formulas that are targeted for affluent people but then you actually um present it to the masses right it has that affluent uh esque Right. It has that 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 feel to it. It feels like it's supposed to be really, really expensive. But then when you click and open it, you realize that it's actually affordable. It's like, oh, my God. Right. Don, like how we were talking about the, Are we creating a product or service that will give our customers bragging rights? So I was reading this article about. Louis Vuitton's world domination, how they they killed in the last two years, right? So, um, so the subheadline says the brand doubled sales in four years. Its strategy is both exclusive and everywhere, right? So they did a they did a breakdown, and I'm gonna do a. I broke it up in three parts. I broke it up in three parts. What Louis Vuitton was doing and how we can actually uh, do the same thing. So in this article here, right, it says that uh, Louis Vuitton did a warehouse, like, like uh, you know, their fashion shows, their regular fashion shows. But what they did was they reached out to influencers. That, well, we call them influencers. Louis Vuitton got the money to buy superstars. Okay. They have the bread to get superstars, but it's still influencers nonetheless, right? So they got Usher. They got, um, hold on, I'll tell you exactly who they got. And and one of them was shocking to me. Um, They got some, a, a pop singer, a Hong Kong pop singer named Jackson Wang. They got US rapper Tyga. And then they had a Lebanese pornographic 
actress who turned social media influencer by the name of Mia Khalifa, right? So it's it's interesting, right? Because I was like, "Yo, I seen her in a couple of porn joints, right?" But that's another that's another conversation. But what they wanted to do is in their fashion shows, they wanted to attract people globally. So they brought in Usher, they brought in Tiger, they brought in all these influencers. Now, if you guys remember, I had introduced you guys to a company called Cameo. Cameo, where you can actually pay influencers to make short commercials for you, right? And then you can use those commercials to actually plug in whatever product or services that you're you're that you're selling at the time. So they do this big <clears throat> they do this big uh fashion show and then according to this it says even by the standards of the fashion world the world was the the show was an over-the-top spectacle one that paid handsomely for the company the show generated more lucrative attention that is one of the words that is what write that down if you have to write it down attention attention that's the number one thing that we have to you know what i mean claw down we have to sink our teeth into that attention it generated more lucrative attention than any other brand during the paris fashion week according to according to hold on Uh, launch metrics, which assigned the monetary value of every article. So supposedly they had, wait, the 272 million in so-called media impacted value was 91% of Louis Vuitton's show last year. So now let's let's look at this. The first thing that they did. <clears throat> I need you guys to put your mogul hats on. Let me let me take a sip of my coffee here. I need you guys to put your mogul hats on. Right? Because success leaves clues. So the first thing they did, they gathered attention. How did they gather attention? It could have been social media. It could have been, hey, we're going to have Usher over here, which was using the influences uh, and successes of other people to get that attention. Hey, we're going to have Tiger over here. We're going to have this Hong Kong pop singer over here. Hey, this fashion show is going to be incredible. You got to be it. The who's who, the knows knows are going to be at this fashion show. You got to watch it. You got to be in the room. So they're creating all this hype. They're creating all of this attention for you to want to be at the show, right? Boom. Boom. Now, what happens at a fashion show, you guys? What happens at a fashion show? What is what is the, the premise of a fashion show? What up, Tech? What up, Gina? What is the premise of a fashion show? Why would a person or a company have a fashion show? Can anybody type, type that into the chat? Why would a company have a fashion show. <clears throat> okay. The reason why a company would have a fashion show is because they want to demonstrate the newest fashion or product or service that they have. Close, Gina. Close. Exposure. But they got the exposure with the attention that they were garnering, right? The reason why you have a fashion show is to display, to demonstrate this new fashion that we're, you're coming out with, right? So, for example, <clears throat> Louis Vuitton may be coming out with a, a, a long dress with 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 sleeveless cuts, right? 
And a person may say, ooh, that looks great. I don't know what kind, what kind of shoes I would wear with that, though. So in the fashion show, they'll show a woman walking down with that dress on with high heels on, right? And then um, she may have a, a headband on to go along with the dress to match with the shoes. Now they're creating this experience. Be like, oh, okay. You just demonstrated how I can wear that garment. Same thing with men fashion. You may you may come out with a you may have a blazer. It may be like a a a, a turquoise blazer, and and then the guy that's sitting in the audience be like, dude, I don't have nothing that can go with that, right? Like there's a, I don't have turquoise in my wardrobe at all. But that model that walks out with that turquoise blazer may have a certain type of shirt that this guy never even thought he might have like you know some you know, buttonless shirt or something to go with salmon pants and a pair of yacht loafers or something. I'm just throwing it out there, right? Now he just, you just demonstrated a way that this person can get this turquoise blazer. So the second thing I need you to write down is called demonstration. Demonstration. Okay? So now we have attention and now we have demonstrate. And then the last thing that brings it all home, brings it all home. Let's see if you guys know. What, 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 what's, the, what's the last component that brings it all together, you guys? I need, I need to see some, some interaction. What is the last component that brings it all home, that makes it, that makes it all worthwhile? What is it, y'all? Type it in the chat. Type it in the chat. And I'm going to show you how you already see, because I wrote notes and I, I, I want to drive this home for you guys. I wrote notes on how you actually see these three components being displayed everywhere you go. Okay, so the last thing that brings everything all home is the damn sales. Okay, we put on this spectacular fashion show. We got the attention of people. It's, it, we have thousands of people in the audience. We've demonstrated how they can wear our fashion, how they can wear our clothes, how they can wear that long dress, how they can wear that turquoise blazer. Now, let's bring it home and let's make sales. How many of these boutiques are ready to pick us up? How many private clients are ready to buy this dress exclusively right now on the spot? How many sales can we generate with this right now? So I need you to write that down. That is the third component, sales. So we have attention, demonstration, and then sales. We got to sell it. We got to sell it. So let me give you some examples on how you can, in today's market, People are gathering attention. So social media posts, go and hit. Listen, you can't, this ain't the day and age where you can just put out one post. It, like, like that shit is over, yo. Like you put out one post a day. Dude, you're, you're not making any type of penetration with that. None. Like, like no market penetration with one post a day, one post a week. You have to be goddamn almost to the point like absolutely ignorant with it. Absolutely ignorant with it. Like this dude po to the point where it's like you're drumming up so much heat that the people either going to hate you. They're going to come to your fire for warmth or they straight up get burnt. Burn down because you're drumming up so much heat from the high level of posting that you're doing on social media channels. And you think, well, you got to put one post on Instagram, one post on Facebook, and then all of a sudden sales are supposed to just start flowing in? Hell no, that's not how this works no more. Not when there's, not when there is, um, 
software like Buffer, which I, I, I put notaries on a long time ago. That's why I said I'm not a notary. I, I teach you guys business, marketing, and sales. Notaries just happen to be some shit that you guys do. But I, 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 I introduced the notary market to Buffer. Buffer will allow you uh, to send multiple posts to multiple channels at the same damn time. I received emails from Facebook and Instagram saying, dude, you're, you're sending too many posts. You have exceeded the limit. <laughs> How many of you guys have gotten that email? If you have not gotten that, I'm not even going to give you the number. I'm going I'm to say this as a goal for you, as a goal. Thank you, God. Like, come on, flex, baby. This is... This is that God download right here. Y'all see, you guys are witnessing God download right here. He flexing right now. He flexing. Yo, yo, tell him this, son. Tell him this, B. All right, yo. Good looking. Good looking, though. I appreciate that. So, I'm not going to tell you the number that gets you that email from Facebook or Instagram or TikTok. I want you guys to... Find out your damn self. I want you to post so much on social media that Facebook sends you an email, Instagram sends you an email and say, my dude, you have exceeded the uh, uh, allowed post per channel. We can't do this many posts for you anymore. You're, you're just posting way too much. That's when you know you're doing the right thing. That is a benchmark. You said a text said, I have never gotten that warning email from Facebook. I need you to get that warning. That will be your benchmark. That's how you know you done crossed over to the other side. You see, you see this other dude right here? That's the other side. I'm on this side, he's on that side. That's how you know you crossed on the other side. When you get that email from Instagram, be like, my dude, you are posting too much. We only allow... How many people... Think about that for a second. Everybody on here, type in one if you've gotten that email. Type in two if you've never gotten that email. I want to do a quick survey here. Type in one if you received that email before. Type in two if you've never received that email. I'll wait. In the meantime, I'm going to sell something. I Close Deals is going down today. Uh, me and Tech, we're doing that master class. If you haven't gotten your tickets, DM me. Go to my link in the bio or go to... Text, link in the bio, get your ticket for I Close Deals. It's going down today. Six o'clock Central Standard Time, um, 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. I Close Deals with teaching notaries how to close more deals at a lucrative price point. So look, okay, that is 100% of people on here right now have never received that email. 100%. Now, <laughs> imagine everybody else that uses social media that never received that email. Think about that. So now you become the top 10% or the top 1% that like, yo, I've pushed, I've pushed Facebook to the limit to the point where they're like, we can't post no more for you. You've reached the limit. DM me once you do that. I want to see, I want you to screenshot that email, send it to me. We'll keep that on the low. That shit is stealth. That shit is low key. We don't need nobody. We don't need that many people up in what we're doing. I may, I may even delete this video right after. I'll let the podcast roll because they can't see shit. 
<laughs> Yo, shout out to the niggas on the podcast, by the way. <laughs> but y'all can't see what we're doing over here. So, goal. Try to try to get that. Your goal, not even to try. Get that damn email. Get that email from Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and to the point where they say, you've posted too much, we can't post no more. That is going to let you know. That is going to be your indicator that you are taking massive action. You are executing at a very high level because, as you can see right here, we did a poll. 100% of people never received that email. That means you're not posting enough. You're probably doing bare minimum or average the most. Average. Okay. So social media posts, right? Then you could go into ads. You could go into Google ads. We're still talking about attention right now. You could go into ads, getting Google ads, Facebook ads, Instagram ads, TikTok ads, Eventbrite ads. There's ads for everything now. There's ads for everything now. We're still talking about gathering attention, garnering attention. Uh, the next thing that you could do, you could start creating commercials. Commercials that will go between your videos and stuff like that. Look, <clears throat> if I ask a question and I'm waiting for you guys to respond, I could have to plug in one of my commercials. Um, so start creating commercials between your segments, right? Email. Email is another great way. Now, I'm going I'm to share something. Yeah, I'm going to delete this video. I'm going to delete this video. Um. One thing that I, I've noticed, in, especially in this digital world, right, is that I bought this book. It's by Perry Marshall. I can't find this book right now. But this book was damn near like 600 pages on how to basically master Google ads um, at that time. 600 pages, six. So I'm, I'm combing through it. I mean, I'm have, I got bookmarks. I'm dog ear in the thing. I'm, I got a highlighter pen. I'm, I'm implementing as I'm reading. I mean, like I'm going in, 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 in. I was zoned all the way in. By the time I completed about 75% of that book and I implemented a lot, guess what happened? Google switched the whole shit up on me. They switched the whole, the whole interface. Everything changed on me. The buttons that the book said was going to be there was no longer there. And I said, hold on, hold on. I, 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 first of all, I was frustrated as hell. I was pissed off because I was like, I spent a lot of my valuable time learning this stuff just so it can switch up on me later. So this is time that I could never get back again, Right. And I said to myself, I was like, this isn't, this isn't a viable thing for me, right? This isn't something that I can just, you know, set it or forget it or, you know, really teach a class on creating Facebook ads, Google ads, and it's going to stay the same. There's going to be some formulas that work, but they're constantly changing the algorithm, they, 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 they're always changing some shit, right? So I was sitting in on a, um, a live with my girl, Maria Lloyd. If you guys don't know who Maria Lloyd is, she was on the Notary War Room. She's a sales copywriter. She's awesome. Uh, check out that interview that we did with her. She just recently did a interview and she was like, you know what has been the most consistent out of all of this digital marketing age, like from Facebook ads to all of this stuff? She said email marketing. Email marketing has been the most consistent. There has been z almost zero changes with that. And I had to think about it because I was like, I've done Google ads, Facebook ads, Instagram ads, and I've done email marketing and I've done all of this other stuff. And I was like, she's right. The interface hasn't changed. It's not like, you know, if I left a year and then came back, it's still going to be the same. It's still designed the same to reach, go to people inboxes in their email. How hard is it for you to go in and open your email box, you know, inbox? 
Not hard at all. How hard is it for you to send the email? Not hard at all. So email marketing has been the most consistent across the board. And I said, I can teach on that because they're not gonna change the interface of it like that. If anything, they offer more products for you to reach more people in an, uh, a more streamlined way. So I'll, I'll, I'll just leave it at that. Email marketing, if you guys ain't setting up your email marketing at this point, you're doing yourself a, a huge injustice because they estimated uh, that millennials and Generation Z will be uh, the email marketing channel will be the most used for those generations. Millennials and Generation Z will be using email and email marketing more than any other generation. Like, so they check their emails first thing when they wake up because they're easier... They either probably got some products where they sell, you know, getting in money or if they're in college, they're supposed to receive an email from a professor or something. They're going to be checking their email more than any other generation. Just want to leave that 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 tidbit with you guys. I don't care. Everybody starts at zero. I want, let me show let me show you how you already got a following, by the way. You probably already got a, a couple of hundred people that are ready to jump on your email list. Every social media site, I want you to calculate how many people you got. Calculate how many people you got on each social media site that you use, from Facebook to Instagram to YouTube. So let's say you got 100 or 200 on each of those channels. Let's say just 100. That's 300 people right there. Tell them that you have an email list and then get 10% of that. That's 30 people. You're not starting at zero. You're not starting at zero. What you've been doing is you've been building up your social media platform audience, which ain't worth shit because social media could just snatch that shit away from you at any given time. They could say, oh, we don't like what Gina just posts. Disable her account. Facebook say, oh, Dawn, uh-uh, we, we don't rock like that. Put her in Facebook jail. Monique, oh, Monique, that you, you rubbed a couple of people the wrong way with that one. Uh, disable her YouTube account. That happened to people that are making six figures a month. So don't act like it can't happen to you or me. They are dismantling people that are making six figures a month through, I'm talking about uh, Google AdSense, like YouTube is paying them and cutting them a check. They're, they're disabling their channels. So it ain't about the money for them. It's about control. You should always be sending people to your email list. But let, let, I'm, I'm, I went on a tangent on that. So email is another way to get attention. Creating a podcast is another way of getting people's attention. Creating a book is another way of getting people's attention. So now let, 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 let's go over to demonstration. Where have we seen demonstration before? Okay. Let's say you go to Lowe's, Home Depot, or any type of appliance store, right? And you're looking to get a washer and dryer. You asked a representative to demonstrate how do I use this washer and dryer? Is this a top loader, a side loader? What kind of soap do I use? Do I use the HE soap with it? Is it better with liquid soap? And he's giving you a full demonstration on how to use that washer and dryer. He's giving you a full demonstration on how to use that new refrigerator that self-produced ice. And it's a smart refrigerator where you can order groceries right on the on the door demonstration and according to the demonstration that is what's going to lead to the sale he already got your attention because you're in the store secondly he's going to give you a demonstration of the appliance that you're looking for and then after that he's going to ask for the sale would you like to get this one today we have financing options available Gina said it happened to her a few times. Yeah, that's what it is. <clears throat> Let me show you another place where you have seen demonstration. When you're purchasing a vehicle, 
They got your attention. Now you're in the car dealership. Now they're like, okay, what kind of car did, were you looking at? Uh, Honda Accord or, you know, the Pilot? What, what are you looking at? Okay. Now they say, okay, let me get your license. Let's take it out for a test drive. That is the demonstration. Now you're inside of the vehicle. The whole test drive is a psychological mindfuck. That's why they do it. I sold cars before, I know. There's like everybody test drives. Like that was their thing. Everybody must test drive the car. Because they understand there is a, once your physiology, you're behind the wheel, you're, you're touching the steering wheel. You're looking, you, you, you push the button to, to have the car light up and you see all these beautiful lights come on the dashboard. You see all these cool gizmos and buttons and you're looking up, you're opening the moon roof, you're adjusting mirrors and shit. You're, you're basically taking ownership of that vehicle before you even purchased it. So they have you test drive it. That is the demonstration. They want you to play around with the button. The, 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 the salesperson sitting on the passenger side he ain't saying shit. He just wait for you to ask questions. He's like, so what do you do here? Oh, this is for the air. What about here? Oh, this is for OnStar. Oh, okay. And you're looking around, and guess what? You get that You get that new car smell in, inside you, right? It's, it's fuck with all your senses, by the way. All of them. The only sense it's not messing with is your sense of taste, right? So... You're touching it, you're seeing it, you're, you're, you're um, experiencing it, you're smelling it, and now you take it for a joy ride, right? Let's take it for a test ride. Let's see what it do. Now, if you are, uh, you know, a speed demon, as Michael Jackson would call it, you might want to see how, if, if the car got balls, right? You're like, huh, you revving that joint, huh, huh. You know, you want to feel a little bit of that G-force. You want to feel it throw you back a little bit. Ha! You know what I mean? Like, woo! Woo-hoo! Yeah, this car got balls. You bring it back to the car dealership. The smart ones, they leave the key on the table. They leave the key on the table. So you could, you still, you're, because you're still in that mode. You're still in, this is my car mode. Now, the last thing for them to do is sell you on it. That's it. The sales part is the easiest part ever. It's all the, uh, the first two that I mentioned, attention and demonstration. That is the, that is really the tricky part. That's really the tricky part. Where else has you seen it before? Health clubs, my favorite, where I sharpen my teeth, which I love to death. That was my, my official, you know, official sales job. When a person came into the health club, right? There's a couple of ways that we would uh, demonstrate. We would either give you a, a five day guest pass Five days, you get to try out the health club. We already know you're, your ass ain't, ain't, ain't going to steal our treadmill. We're safe. We're safe on that. We know you're not going to be stealing equipment out of the health club. So we give you a, a five-day guest pass. Go try out the club. Oh, you, you haven't worked out in a long time? Would you like to sit in on one of our orientations? Now we have a, a person. This is where we really get them. We have a person that gives you an orientation to show you around to the equipment and get you to work up a good sweat. What are you looking to lose weight? Okay, the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to take you to the treadmill first, right? We're going to take you to the treadmill, have you do a good five minutes. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to take you to the elliptical machines, especially if you have bad knees. We don't want to shock your knees too much. We're going to show you how... This elliptical machine is very low impact and it still does what the treadmill does with cardio. Now we're gonna have you go forward on the elliptical machine and then we're gonna have you do it backwards. Now you're working up a sweat. Remember, we're touching the senses now, right? You're in an environment, 
You're touching a machine. You're feeling the, the effects of that machine. You're sweating. You're breathing hard. There's only two things. There's only two things in life that, that get people sweating and breathing hard. Working out and sex. Facts. That's why a lot of personal trainers... Yeah, they sleep with a lot of chicks. They do. I'm just I'm just being honest. Because they the personal trainers get the female client to be doing a lot of exercise that is very closely related to sex. Just letting you know. If you're dating a personal trainer. <laughs> but yeah, okay, so They'll have you do the orientation, give you the guest pass, and then try out the equipment. That's how they demonstrate. And then after they demonstrate that, okay, now you could go down to the sales office and, then be, and try to figure out a plan that works best for you. If you're a person that travels, okay, you may want the multi-club membership. If you only got to be coming to this club, just get a singular club membership. You see what, what I mean? Like the, the sales process is really the easiest process. It's getting the person to come into the health club, getting their attention first, and then demonstrating to them why they need this. And then the sales part is just the exchange of money. That's all that is. Okay, and then one last way how people are using demonstration in, um, in the digital world, right? In the digital world. The way they're doing that <clears throat> is you'll see that they're offering seven day trials right they'll have you try a seven day trial they'll have you try a, a, a 14 day trial a 30 day trial try uh disney plus for 14 days on us or or check out my academy for the next seven days free of charge try out this software for 14 days they won't they that's their self demonstration that's the way of you getting to give that product a test drive. Y'all see how that work? Now, in the digital world, it's just slightly different because what they use is called the uh, endowment effect. The endowment effect. What is the endowment effect? The endowment effect is when you give somebody something to try out, right? And they enjoy, they play with it. I want you to imagine a little kid, right? A little kid, and you ask that little kid, would you like to play with this toy? And the little kid say, yeah, I'd like to play with that toy. And you give the toy to the little kid. And now the kid's playing with that toy, doing it like, yay, this is fun, I really like it. And as soon as they really start enjoying it, and it's like, oh, you see the little kid do one of these, oh, I can do this. You take the toy back. <laughs> you take the toy back. You're like, okay, your time is up. That is called the endowment effect. So now the person felt ownership and possession of that product and you took it away because the trial is now over. You no longer have privilege with this trial. Now, if you want to continue playing with it, little child, Go ahead and pay me for this. And it's yours again. You already tried it out, right? Like you enjoyed it. You're having fun with it. The person took it back, which could be like your, your seven day trial. It could be uh, stars in black says that, hey, you know, your trial has ran out. Now you got to pay. Disney Plus does it all the time. Netflix does it. You snatch it. And now you put them in a position to say, if you want to continue to use it, if you want to continue to use it, pay. What do you think happens most of the time? They pay. That's why companies use it. It works. It works. You got to self demo the thing. They got your attention. Now you self-demoed whatever product or service it was. And now they rip it away from you and then ask you to pay. Now, it, for those that are notaries, right? Because I got to bring it home with the notaries for you guys. 
For those that are notaries, how are you able to do the demonstration while you're on the phone? Well, this is what we call a walkthrough, okay? The walkthrough is where you actually take the client from point A to point B and then show them exactly what the process is. So if a client says, okay, so this is what's going to happen next. Now that we got all the information, I'm going to send you a link that will allow you to select a day and time to book your appointment. At the very end, there is a payment gateway. You're gonna make your payment through that payment gateway. And then you'll receive a confirmation. Then we'll receive a confirmation on our end. Once we receive that confirmation, we will dispatch the notary out to you to notarize your document. There's nothing less for you to do. That is a walkthrough. That is the demonstration. That is the seven day trial. That is the client getting on the treadmill and trying it out. That is me showing you what the appliance can do. So you have attention, demonstration, and then you better bring it home with the sales. Because if you ain't selling nothing, if there's no transaction that happens, if there is no money that gets exchanged, you didn't do shit. You, you can call that a volunteer day. You just volunteered your time and, time and services that day. Any questions? Any questions? <sighs> I, fe I felt that download. I had to go in live with you guys on that one. Any questions? While you guys are, you can either request to go live or you can type in your question if you like. In the meantime, let me plug in a commercial. Yay. AI Crash Course is... February 21st to the 23rd is a three-day live interactive workshop. You can go to TigerToledo.com to get your tickets. We only have a couple of tickets left. Then we're sold out. This is the first and last of this event that I'm doing. Because by that time, you know, AI, there's, there's going to be a million replicas of what I, but I'm the first one to bring it though. I'm the first one to bring the AI crash course for notary entrepreneurs. Holla at the kid. So if you want to be in the room, we're gonna be networking. We're gonna we're gonna see the software that it's gonna be very very helpful for what we're trying to do. Now I, I always say notary entrepreneur because we do more than just notarized documents. We have authors in the building. They're rolling out books. We have content developers that are rolling out courses and academies and stuff. Like, this, this is way bigger than you stamping an affidavit, yo. So I would say it's an AI crash course for entrepreneurs, but it's, it's too broad. It's too broad of a, a subject. So I say notary entrepreneur because I am really targeting a certain group of people. Uh, Tech said, should I lower the price if the person uh, gas when I try to sell it? Only if it happens consistently, right? Only, again, we're going to go back to pattern recognition. New era, in a new era, you have to develop new skills, you guys. So therefore, the verbiage is going to change. You're going to see it right before your eyes. People are going to be talking about some shit. Unless you know what they're saying, it's going to fly right over your head. So pattern recognition. If I give a certain price for a certain type of document to 10 people, and out of those 10 people, nobody buys, then my price is uh, out of market. Like It's not even in the same universal orbit of what it should be. But now if I um, if I present that price to 10 people, and my rule of thumb 33 is a good number to, you know, Jesus Christ still. Um, 33 is a good number. So I would say that's a good number to, to say, I'm gonna keep that price. I like that price. If, if three people out of 10 purchases 
that product, I say, okay, that, that's a good sign. I might want to keep that price. I might want to keep that price. And then what I'll have to do is I may have to create a little more value around that product to get my sales numbers up. But a lot of times it really isn't the price. It really isn't a price because, I, again, how can you justify paying a million dollars for a, a Rolls Royce? You can't justify the value of that. How can you justify the value of paying $50,000 for a watch, a Rolex, when you can go to Walmart and buy one for $10? There's no, you can't justify that. They are attracting these people because they are building value around the product that they're selling. They're not selling you a product and service. They're not selling you features and benefits. They're selling you a fucking emotion. Apple started selling all of those computers because they was like, we, we're, we're, we're marketing towards the, the, the people that just think different. Think different, right? Those outcasts. Have you have you been coined as an outcast? You know what I mean? Have you been, you know, shunned because of the way you think and the way you do things? Well, this computer is for you. A computer. This computer is for you. This is a marketing genius. They had to create value where there was none. They created a damn religion around Apple. There are people walking around right now in the world, hundreds of people, it might be thousands to be honest with you, with the Apple tattooed to their body. Tattooed to their body. That's how serious that is. How do you sell a, a rock, a, a fucking rock? A small ass rock. Look, you can't even even see the diamonds on 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 my on my wedding band. That shit went for like almost four racks. Almost four racks. How the fuck you sell? A, so you know what I mean? How do you sell a fucking rock for thousands and thousands of dollars? Because you don't sell the rock. You sell the damn experience and love, right? You sell the, 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 you're only going to get married once, hopefully. You know what I mean? Like, like th this is what they're selling to sell you this fucking rock. So they're not selling the product. They're not selling the service. They're not selling the benefits. What benefit is this? This shit benefits me at all. Nothing at all. It does nothing for me. Nothing. It doesn't bring down anxiety. It doesn't, you know what I mean, make me feel better. It doesn't give me energy. It doesn't do nothing. But right now, this is the most expensive thing on my body. Jewelry wise. And clothing, right? They're not selling you on what on the obvious. You have to look beyond the story, be, beyond the surface layer story. Regular notary will call and just order take. Hey, would you like cheese with that? Would you like, uh, uh, you know, a shake? Would you like, you know what I mean? They're very robotic with it, right? But an elite performer notary is going to say, all right, tell me about the situation. Like, what's going on that you need a power of attorney? Look. Help me see what you see. What's going on? They're consulting. They're they're gathering intelligence. They're, now when they get when they give the client a price of two hundred, three hundred dollars, that shit don't mean nothing. That's like, pfft. dude. First of all, you are like a therapist. You heard me out. I was going through some shit. You gave me guidance. You walked me through. Um, a situation that I really couldn't figure out and then you gave me solutions yes I'm gonna spend money with you absolutely 300 that's it you're cheaper than my therapist
that is what it is you guys so okay one more time ai crash course um is tomorrow it starts tomorrow if you don't have your tickets grab that i close deals with me and tekamaku that is going down today with still a couple of tickets left go to our link in the bio tigertoledo.com or visit text page and go to his link and you can get the tickets there you heard so peace love and happiness i hope you guys got value out of this until then let's get this money baby you heard